Hello everyone and welcome back to the Artist Consulting YouTube channel. My name is Jared Farber. Today we're going to be talking about a new feature that was released during Ignite last year called the Optimize Ribbon in Power BI Desktop. Now the optimize ribbon function only exists for direct query scenarios, which if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because really what you're trying to do here is control the number of queries that are being sent back to your source. So with direct query, you know, your data, your, your file itself is actually, you know, querying your source constantly versus as an import uh, model where you've got your, all of your data cached in your model itself. So in the direct query model, there's going to be situations where you're potentially pulling back a lot of data. And as you're you know, developing your reports and your dashboards and things like that, you're going to potentially want to control um, how many queries are being pulled. Uh, so to do that, what we actually do is go into Power BI Desktop. And in this example here, I've got an Adventure Works data set with three tables that I pulled in. I've got two dimension tables and one back table. And so I've got a slicer up here for person and then a visual down here, which is showing the sum of sales amount by last name. So in this situation, let's just say I wanted to make uh, a couple of changes to my visual itself, um, which is really one of the big, you know, benefits to using this, uh, this function in itself. So if I click on the visual and I go up to format or sorry, go up to optimize. I can actually hit this pause visuals button right here. So if I click on that, now all my visuals are paused. So they're not gonna necessarily send queries back to the source. They're not gonna necessarily update, um, but this is where I can actually develop myself. So in this example, let's say I wanted to change last name here on the X axis to let's just say fiscal year. We'll go up to our second dimension table dim date, click on that and pull in fiscal year. Say I pull that right there on the x-axis, and now I want to get rid of last name as well. So you can see it says visuals are paused. Some edits won't be applied until you refresh or resume visual queries. So it's not going to actually resume the queries themselves until I hit that resume visual queries. And if I undo one button, you can see here I've got um, you know potentially two uh, two columns here in the x-axis, and it's actually saying visual has pending changes. So I need to hit refresh for that to actually show these changes as well. So now it's kind of like a hierarchy in the X axis, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove last name for now. And I'm gonna hit resume visual queries. So now rather than updating, you know, sending uh, potentially two or three queries, which is what it would have been had I, you know, added a field, moved the order, potentially deleted another field, it's gonna pause that and only send one query each time I make the change. So really what it's allowing us to do is make changes to our uh, existing direct query report and, you know, make the changes without running queries until I'm actually ready. If I wanted to, I could not just update the visuals themselves. I could create any kind of, you know, new visuals as well. So let's just say I wanted a pie chart or something like that with, um, let's just say uh, sales amount as well. And I wanted to, you know, add any kind of other visuals to it. Let me actually X out and hit pause visuals. If I add sales amount to the values and let's just say, you know, same kind of thing, fiscal year to the legend. Now, if I hit uh, refresh and resume visual queries, that didn't actually send the query until I hit that. So it puts a lot less stress on your source and, you know, it allows you to actually make the changes to your report without having to wait for things to, to query and to, you know, to render on your report and things like that, which can be very useful depending on how many visuals you have and how much data you have going. Um, you can also potentially create measures as well in a direct query model, and you don't have to actually refresh your, your visuals without, um, without actually uh, creating it. So if I go to fact internet sales and hit new measure, Let's just call this test measure. We'll do the sum of uh, sales amount. So I've got this new measure in here and same kind of thing if I hit optimize, pause visuals. And let's just say I removed sum of sales amount and added this new test measure, even though that's the same, you know, the same kind of uh, field it's using, the same concept exists. I still have to hit resume visual queries before that's actually gonna send the query back to the source. Um, 
couple of other things you can do with this optimized ribbon button. Um, you can go into the, uh, the model itself and you can actually update the relationships pretty quickly over here on the, on the property side. So for example, I've got a few relationships existing. Uh, my customer table to my fact table, fact internet sales. And I've also got my date table to fact internet sales. If I click on one of the relationships, you can see over here, I can actually change these right here. So a lot quicker and I potentially, I could even do two at the same time. If I, let's just say I wanted to assume referential integrity for both of these, uh, both of these relationships at the same time, I can mass change that there. Potentially I could also Mass, mass delete them if I wanted to as well by hitting the control button. So it just makes things a lot quicker. You know, you don't have to actually wait for the relationship to see if it's valid. You can you update these all at once and it's just a much quicker way of doing things. Um, last thing I wanna show you is in the report itself, you can see this optimization presets button right here as well. So if things you can do, it's automatically set for interactivity, but if I hit query reduction, says your report is optimized for query reduction. This turns off cross-highlighting and cross-filtering. Basically what's happening is exactly that. It's turning off cross-highlighting and cross-filtering, and it's forcing you to manually select if you want, as you're changing a slicer. If I have to hit apply now, if I wanna change these. So it just makes things you know, a little more controllable from your side. It reduces your queries, and you know, as soon as you hit apply, of course, it'll run a query, but um, it allows you to control those a lot easier. The other thing you can do in optimization presets is do a customize option. So let's just say rather than you know adding this apply button here, if I wanted to instantly apply the slicer changes, I could change that there. So it gives you once again gives you more control over the queries running, and you know how your actual report is set up. So all in all, this optimize uh, ribbon has been a very useful tactic, and it's especially useful for developers, people that are creating the reports themselves. Uh, so please use this in the future, and uh, please stay tuned for our next video. Um, our Another related video for this one would be our deployment pipelines video, kind of talking about, you know, version control and how you can set up, um, you know, your developer controls and things like that. So please stay tuned for our next video and please refer to that video. Thank you.